Hi, this is Jeff Minter with Automotive Research and Design, and I'm here today with a hybrid vehicle tech tip brought to you by P10 Magazine. Our tech tip today is going to be about hybrid vehicle batteries. We'll take a look at the basics of these batteries and explain some of the differences between various models. There are really two primary battery types being used right now in the hybrid vehicle market, and one definitely has the majority of the share. The first one that's most common is nickel metal hydride battery packs. There are two typical designs of these that are being used by various manufacturers. One of those is a cylindrical design, and the other one is a prismatic design. Different manufacturers are choosing to use different designs depending on how they want to build their battery packs. The other technology that's being utilized in the industry right now is lithium. Lithium battery packs come in a, a wide variety of different chemistries, but they're still not becoming a, a wide use unit at this point, mainly because they're very expensive. And because of that expense, it just doesn't make sense for a hybrid vehicle. Now, if we look at things like plug-in hybrids and full electric vehicles, those will definitely have to have lithium because lithium does have a higher energy density than nickel metal hydride. But from your traditional hybrid standpoint, many of those vehicles are still sticky with nickel metal hydride. Hybrid vehicle batteries are wired in what's known as a series configuration. If you're familiar with series circuits, this is very similar in the fact that there's only one path for current to flow. What that means is they take several small batteries, typically made out of anywhere from four cells to six cells per module assembly, even in some cases up to eight for some of the Toyota and Lexus models. Then they wire those module assemblies into series. So each of the modules has cells wired in series, and the modules are then wired in series to further build the voltage. Now what that means is the, back, the battery pack is going to be limited by the weakest cell within that series circuit. Because a series circuit only has one path, it has to flow through all of the cells. So any limitation anywhere within that series circuit will cause a problem within that battery pack. Because hybrid battery packs are wired in series, the vehicle has to have a way to monitor that battery pack to ensure that it's balanced. That's because they need to make sure that all of those modules that are connected in series behave similarly during both charge and discharge. In order to do that, the vehicle uses something called voltage sense leads. They connect those voltage sense leads generally to two module assemblies that are wired in series. It looks at the voltage on those modules during the charge and discharge process, and it compares them with the other voltage sense leads that are connected to adjacent pairs of battery modules. What that allows it to do is make sure that all of the battery packs are absorbing and discharging that energy within a relatively narrow parameter. If it starts to exceed a set variance, it will then flag a diagnostic trouble code and limit the vehicle performance to ensure that some of the battery pack is not being overcharged or that some of it's not being over discharged. In addition to monitoring the battery for balance, the vehicle will also monitor it for current flow and some temperature sensors. The current flow along with the air temperature sensor and some module temperature sensors will be used for a couple of different things. The first one for current flow is going to be coupled with the voltage sense leads as well as the temperature sensors to help estimate the vehicle state of charge. There is no direct measurement on the nickel metal hydride to determine the state of charge of the battery, so this is a very critical input to help the vehicle actually calculate out the estimated state of charge of that battery pack. The temperature of the battery pack is also a critical input because it needs to make sure that portions of that battery pack are not getting hotter than the rest of the battery pack, and they also need to make sure that there's actually air flowing through the battery pack assembly to help keep that battery cool during both the charge and discharge process. So we'll have a couple of different temperature sensors located on various modules within that battery pack. They'll compare those for a variance to ensure that one's not getting excessively hot compared to the other. And then there will be another temperature sensor that's generally in the pack in order to monitor the air temperature coming in and watch for a change in that temperature if the fan's commanded on. That way they know not only was the fan commanded on, but there was also airflow. That air temperature sensor is not on all batteries, but it's becoming more and more common. This was obviously just a very quick overview of the battery packs and some of the key components in there that can cause diagnostic trouble codes, such as a voltage imbalance, a current sensor issue, or a temp sensor issue, or a battery temperature issue. If you would like to see more information on what types of failures can occur, how they can be diagnosed, and the equipment required to do that, be sure to check out the P10 upcoming session on hybrid battery failure analysis. Thank you for watching this hybrid vehicle tech tip brought to you by P10 Magazine. 
Hopefully you'll tune in for another tech tip or training session in the near future.